looks so different. <laughs> um, imagine that we live in a world where we manage to limit climate change, where there were no longer increases in extreme weather events like we're facing today, no more sea level rise, no more wildfires caused by climate change. Can we make that happen? And if so, how can we make this happen? Well, that is what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, climate change is one of the most urgent uh, problems we are facing. We are already seeing the negative consequences now. Like I said, more extreme weather events, flooding, like we saw in the Netherlands uh, last year, wildfires across the world, uh, sea ice is uh, melting in the Arctic areas. And urgent action is needed if we want to limit climate change and make sure that our life is still a good life. So how can we make this happen? Well, you can, say, you can think like one of the first things we need to ensure and that we need to take care of is that people believe climate change is happening and that people believe it is caused by human action. So I'm now presenting some data from a European social survey uh, conducted like five years ago in 23 uh, European countries. And I will ask you what you think the outcomes are. And the first question I would like you to think about and also tell me what your thoughts are, is what percentage of this huge representative sample of these European countries, what percentage of people denies that climate change is happening? Just yell the numbers that you think, percentages. Anyone? 60, 40, 20, 10. So we're getting the, lo the lower numbers now. Yeah, OK. Well, the next question. What percentage believes that it is not caused by human behavior? 40, 25, 30. You, oh, yeah, you all come at quite high numbers, and that's what I normally see when I ask this question. And this, th these are the numbers. This is the percentage of pe people denying that climate change is happening. It's only 2%. And a very small minority doubts a little bit, but the vast majority think, yes, it is happening. Similarly, if we ask, is it human caused or is it a natural phenomenon? The vast majority thinks it is caused by our behavior. It's, again, a very small minority that thinks it has nothing to do with what we do in our daily lives. So the issue is not that people don't believe climate change is happening. The issue is how can we ensure that the people take action so that climate change will be limited and that we can limit temperature increase till one and a half degree or maybe two degrees like we promised or not we, our governments promised in the Paris Agreement. So we can do many different things to help fight climate change. And this, these are just some pictures of behaviors that you, we, together, could, could engage in to help mit, uh, mitigate climate change, limit climate change. We could uh, install solar PV on our houses, or invest in wind parks, for example, or we could travel in more sustainable ways, not flying or driving, driving in a fossil fueled car, but rather have an electric vehicle or maybe even public transport, cycling more, walking more, for example. We could insulate our houses, buy energy efficient appliances, uh, recycle or reduce the number of products that we purchase, uh, change our diets, less animal-based uh, products, so less dairy and less meat products. But we can also uh, engage in all kinds of political actions, protest, go to the, on the streets and demand more uh, stringent measures from the government or the, uh, ask go uh, companies to produce different pr uh, products. Or vote for parties that are likely to implement climate policies. And if we want to limit climate change to one and a half degrees and two, or two degrees, which is really needed if we want to help reduce the, the negative consequences that we are facing already today, we might need to engage in many of these actions over and again in many different contexts. So and an important question is, what 
motivates people to do so, or what demotivates people to do so. Now, one of the main things that is really important to understand climate actions are values. And values are general goals that we strive for in our lives. And if you want to understand climate actions, there's four types of values particularly relevant. Two of them make people focus on their self-interest. And that's first hedonic values. We want to have pleasure. We want to reduce effort. And second, egoistic values. And that means that we want to enhance our resources. It can be money, but can also be things like status. And you, some climate actions are also pleasurable to do, like cycling on a sunny day. That's something I would enjoy at least. And some uh, climate actions are profitable as well. If you reduce your uh, ele electricity use in your home, you would save money. But oftentimes, anything you do to help li limit climate change is rather effortful, not always pleasurable, like many people would prefer to uh, drive a car than to uh, travel in the bus, for example. And many times it's also quite expensive. If you want to insulate your home or install solar PV, you need to have money to be able to invest in it. It's rather expensive. Organic produce is oftentimes more expensive than the regular pr produce that you find in the supermarkets. So oftentimes these values inhibit climate actions. But still, if you think about what you are doing, you do many things that are not always directly in your own interest. You do recycle, for example, even though it's somewhat effortful. It would be more easy to put it in a regular bin. Many people engage in actions that benefit the environment. And that is because we not only care about our self-interest, but we also care about the interest of others and about uh, caring for the environment. So we also uh, endorse altruistic values. We want to enhance the well-being of other people, not only our close others, but also distant others and future generations. And we endorse biospheric values or environmental values, I can better say. And that means that we also care about nature and environment as such. And the more people endorse these values, the more important these values are to people, the more likely they are to act on climate change, because that would benefit others and the environment. So you could promote climate actions by targeting these four types of motives that people have. And that's often being done in campaigns. I will show you some examples, and this happened to be uh, uh, flyers that we, that we tested in a field experiment in the US, by the way. And we wanted to see what motivates people to check their tire pressure. Because if your tires are properly inflated, you save gasoline. If you save gasoline, you save money, but you would also emit less CO2. So we wanted to know what type of message would be most strongly motivating people to check the tire pressure as compared to not providing any arguments. Should we emphasize that people can save money? Or should we emphasize it's good for the environment? So can you raise your hand if you think the financial message would be most effective? I think it's uh, very almost everyone. Is there anyone who thinks the environmental message would be most effective? A minority. Well, that's what I often see. I, I think I saw four hands or so. That's often what I see when I ask this question. And it's also what people tell us when we ask them, what would motivate you most? Many people say money. And it makes sense, right? Because we know what a euro is and we have no clue what a kilogram of CO2 would be. And we have it right in the pocket. And while well, environmental benefits are long-term uh, aspects only, right? We won't see them uh, immediately. But what we found is that the financial message was the least effective. The most effective was the environmental one. Why, would you say? Well, first, if you emphasize financial benefits, people engage in a cost-benefit analysis, and they think, OK, I will save a few dollars or a few euros, but then I have to go to the gas station and check my tires, and what a hassle. It's not worth the effort. And that's what we find, the exact same behaviors, people find it less worth the effort when you emphasize the financial benefit as uh, compared to the environmental one. So why do people then find the environmental benefits more worth the effort? 
That's because doing good, doing something good for the environment, benefiting others, makes us feel good because we do something meaningful. And this is particularly the case because many people care about benefiting others and the environment as well. So let's go back to the same values I showed before and uh, data from the same survey that I mentioned, the European Social Survey. When you ask people how important are these four types of value to you, then the altruistic and biospheric values are more important for people. So people care more about benefiting others and the environment as compared to doing something pleasurable or having, uh, uh, enhancing your resources. And this is not only ch uh, cheap talk like uh, well, the social desirable responding, because what I said, the more people endorse these values, the more likely they are to act upon it and to engage in climate actions. So you can say there's a strong motivational basis for climate action. Many people are motivated to protect the environment and to make sure that future generations have a good life too. And these environmental values also affect the way we see ourselves. So the stronger, the more we care about the environment, the more likely we are to see ourselves as a green person. And that motivates us to act accordingly because we want to be consistent. We don't like to do something that is not in line with how we see ourselves. So the more you see yourself as a green person, the more likely you are to act on climate change. But this is not only dependent on your values, but also on your previous actions. So you're also more likely to see yourself as a green person when you look back and think, oh, I did already quite something to protect the environment. That would also strengthen it and that would also promote future sustainable actions. The opposite is also true. If you emphasize or make people realize they did not engage in climate action before, they're less likely to see themselves as a green person and thus less likely to act accordingly. And that's what we often do in the media, in campaigns. It's often emphasized many people don't do the right thing. They don't engage in climate action. And that might demotivate them to take future actions as well. Well, actually, recently the Dutch government had launched a campaign where they emphasized that many people already do a lot. And that we not only care about how we see ourselves, but also how we see the groups that we belong to. So if you are a member of a group that you think also strongly cares about the environment, you're more likely to do so as well. Because if you identify with a group, you think you belong to a group, and the group has a certain goal, you think like, okay, the, the group finds it important, I'm a member of this group, so apparently I find it important as well. And that can motivate uh, sustainable actions as well. And that's actually also what is found. If, you, if people are working for a company and they think that company is strongly caring about protecting the environment, they are also have a stronger goal to protect the environment and act accordingly. So it also matters what the group finds important. So we should also emphasize that the groups that we belong to, many of them do find, it do find it important to protect the environment. Many companies endorse corporate environmental responsibility. They have environmental goals and they implemented the practices to reduce their environmental impact. So you might say, okay, many people care about the environment. People have a strong motivation to uh, protect the environment. Why are we still facing these problems? Why didn't we manage to limit climate change? Well, that's because sometimes people don't know which actions would protect the environment and uh, limit climate change. Or many times it's not very attractive or even not feasible. So climate action is not the sole responsibility of individuals. Many other actors need to act as well. And it can be different actions. It can be companies who can produce or develop more sustainable products. It can be governments that implement policies that enable us to engage in climate actions. And these are just some examples of things that other actors like companies or governments or organizations can do to enable and empower us to engage in climate actions. So we will be more likely to cycle if there's good bike lanes available. Uh, if we want, you want people to drive electric vehicles, you have to ensure that there's a charging infrastructure uh, available. 
Public transport networks deter determine whether people will travel and can travel by public transport. Subsidies might be needed if people can't afford to invest in all kinds of sustainable solutions, like insulating your home, for example. And if you don't offer vegan or vegetarian options in a restaurant, it's less likely that people uh, limit their meat consumption. So there's many actors can influence these type of choices. So if you want to limit climate change, it's not sufficient to look at the consumer, but the other actors need, actors need to act as well. So together, we can limit climate change. We can all contribute to limiting climate change as a consumer by uh, eating or doing different things, as a citizen by voting for different parties, as an employee, as an employer, as an activist. In many different capacities, we can contribute to climate change. And many people are motivated to li help limit climate change. So if we all work together and take our responsibility, do whatever we can to help limit climate change, we can make sure that people across the world and also future generations like your children and grandchildren have a good life too. Thank you.